Hi, Seta here. In this video, I will show you how to set up the lighting in Unity to achieve morning down lighting. But first, let's look at some details that occurs in the real world that we need to pay attention if we want to reproduce morning lighting in Unity. The lightning at dawn and dusk is very similar, but there is a few differences to keep in mind. In the real world, the colors at the dawn are light blue, pink and orange, where at the dusk they are orange turning into red, purple and navy, or dark blue. Because the sun is lower on the horizon, it appears slightly larger than during noon. The colors of the skies also depends on the clarity of the air. With clear skies, the color is intensely blue, while with polluted air, it might appear small dull. In the case of fog, which occurs quite frequently, the light becomes more diffuse, leading to softer and more mysterious lighting. The intensity of the light is still low, that makes the color less saturated and the shadows less sharp. Now, when we know these elements, we can try to reproduce them in Unity. So, let's get started. Okay, so we have our mine scene. I create uh, a little canyon with forest uh, and of course uh, a river. I create this scene only using free asset. So if you want to grab them, uh, there is a link in the description. And now let's enable few options. So click Edit, Project Settings, HDRP, and we need for, to the scene Screen Space Global Illumination, Screen Space Reflection, Transparent, and Volumetric Clouds. To the Transparent Screen Space Reflection work, we need to enable transparent in HDRP global settings, camera lighting transparent. So as you can see, our water have now a nice reflection. Now let's create some global volume. Right click, volume, global volume. Uh, we need a new profile and we need to add override. Uh, so select visual environment and uh, sky type will be, of course, physically based sky, ambient mood dynamic, uh, and I set global wind speed to zero because I don't want to the clouds cover the sun when they move. And now we add another override. Sky, physically based sky. And we have a few options here. But first, we need to set up our sun to be visible. So let's move rotation. Uh, in and mm -hmm. I think that it will be good. Uh, we need to change the size of the sun to be a little bigger and decrease flare size something about. Ah, let's take four. Okay, so we have the sun. Uh, we need to change temperature to be a little colder. 
Uh, as you can see, there is a few icons that show us examples of when a given temperature of lights occurs. So I set up the temperature uh, of the sun, something around 10,000. Uh, remember to change the filter color because on the standard there is a little orange tin on it, uh, so we must set up to the white. And then go to the shadow map, enable, let's increase some resolution, and then click these three dots and show additional properties because we need to change a dimmer a bit because we don't want the shadows to be too dark and we enable a contact shadow which we will add later and set them in global volume now let's go back to the global volume and in the physical based sky we must set the ground tint to be a gray and then in the aerosol let's increase the aerosol density and we change the horizon tint to the more blue. Horizon Zenith Shift we set up to 1. And next we add some volumetric fog. Add override fog. Let's enable all and volumetric fog. Let's increase the volumetric fog distance to 200 and base high to something about 10 and maximum high let's increase this to okay that will be good uh, we need also in the directional light increase the multiplier of volumetric just a little bit okay let's go back to the global volume and then in the color mode tint let's set up this fog to have a little blue tint and in albedo Let's also give this fog a little blue tint. Okay, that will be good. Now let's add some volumetric clouds. So add override, sky, volumetric clouds. Let's enable all and then in the cloud preset i set them to custom and a density multiplier i change the density the clouds a little bit or something like that in shape factor I change a little and then in the cloud thickness I will set up to 1000. You can spend some time to change position of the cloud or shape factor or erosion factor to get effect you like the most. Now we add some 
space global illumination and space reflection. So add override, lightning, screen space global illumination. Let's enable all. As you can see, our scene has changed. Uh, I'll set the quality to high and add lightning reflection and set them to all. Now we add some shadows override. So shadow and let's decrease the max distance of shadow to 300. Add some micro shadow. Like this. And before we add in the directional light contact shadow. So now we add them to the global volume. Add override shadow, contact shadow, and enable. Before we go to the color correction, we need to set up the exposure and the intensity of our light. So go to the directional light. And as you can see, our intensity is set up to the high sun. So we need to change this. To the sunset or low sun. Okay. Now in the global volume, add override and exposure. Personally, I mostly use the fixed settings because uh, I find the other options sometimes too random when it comes to setting the exposure. So I use the fixed mode and in the fixed exposure, I increase this value to get the views, something like that. But of course, if you want, you can use any other options that you like. Before we go to the color correction, we must set up the reflection probe. So right click, lightning, reflection probe. Uh, I increase the box size to 200, 100 and 200 and set this reflection probe to get entire area like this. I enable influence volume. and then bake. So as you can see, the all scene has changed. And if you want to learn more about Reflection Probe, in the Nature Manufacturer channel, I uh, create a tutorial only about Reflection Probe. So go there, link in the description. And now let's go back to the global volume. At override, post processing, shadow, midtone, highlights. Because we need increase some shadows and give them a little blue tint. Like this. And we add another Override, post processing, split tuning. We enable shadow 
and set this blue tint again. Okay, add another override, post processing, color adjustments, and now we need post exposure if you want more brightness or darker are and in contrast I decrease a little contrast and in saturation I decrease the saturation because we need less contrast and colors and for this scene I add another override lightning indirect lightning controller and increase The diffuse lighting just a little bit okay and this is how I set up the down lighting uh, of course we can just add more mist in the river so right click rendering local volumetric fog Let's increase the size of this volumetric fog. And we need to blend distance of it. And decrease the fog distance. Let's move the fog here and of course we can just duplicate this volume and increase it and set up here we need to change the size and blend the distance distance fog and give them another blue tint it all depends on seeing what you work and what effect you want to get okay that's all in this tutorial i hope that this was useful for you if you have any questions write them in the comments below and till the next time see ya